Okay, we're kicking off week 17 and we're going to get some uh, satin two-pack on this engine bay. So we basically just, just give everything a really light nib down with a foam pad, prep washed it, we've chamfered off the edges of all these bits and cleaned up any little dags anywhere. That's about it, that's ready to go. But at the same time, we've got a couple of extra panels that we made for the floor, so I've got, I'm going to blow a coat on them. We thought while we're doing the battery box, because that was uh, just straight aluminium, so we're going to blow some black on that. While we're doing that, we thought we'd do the puke tank as well. So I reckon the more black you have, the faster you go. So the more murdered out it is. We'll pick up a few mile an hour there. We've also put little returns on the front edges of the floor pan because they can, Blaze informed us that the wind can get caught under there. So if you put a little return there and then deuce it on, it keeps a bit of pressure on that panel, so that was a really good tip. Yeah, that's basically it. We're ready to go, so let's get into it and hit it. Guys, we're just whacking the body deuces in now, getting all the holes drilled. Then we're going to separate the body off the car and we're going to put the bang rivets in there. It's all coming up so trick. We've got all the floor panels in there. You can see how beautiful and flush the floor is. All new deuce fasteners in there. And then coming inside, Connor's been hard at work in here, loading all the pedals back in. He's just in the early stages of. Uh, the throttle cable that's going to be obviously fully adjustable uh, for if we want to move it to a different place or move the pedals forward that's why it's got multiple holes there another big thing that we did was we've got a brake stop this happened to me many years ago where I had a spring retaining my brake pedal from falling backwards the spring came off and I, my brake pedal came out of the master cylinder that was a terrible day so what we've done on this car is we've just got like a little stop here where the brake pedal can never come past um, the neutral position so with that that's the brake not applied then you apply the brake it can never come back past the neutral position so that's a good little good little thing to think about when you're putting a car together wednesday afternoon we just kicked 60 square meters of concrete onto the ground but we still got home around lunchtime so we're slipping back into the the Corvette. Uh, we've got the engine bay all painted out as you saw the other day. So we started loading all the brake lines and fire lines back in. We're starting to get P clips into those. It's looking mint with a bit of satin black on there. We've got the springs back in the car instead of the um, the blocks that we had in there. So next time we go down the ground, we're going to start setting our ride height and looking at final tire size. We've only got a 24 inch tire on here at the moment, so. We'll get it down on the ground, check out what size tyre we actually need to achieve perfect ride height. Uh, Brad and Bailey will be dropping the engine in tomorrow night, so then that's the final time that goes in before we, before we reveal the thing. Uh, we're getting these doors all loaded up for the last time, so they look killer with the blackout against the green and all the stainless Allen keys in there. Um, all these little all this little bar works all had a nice coat of flat black on it all the stainless hardware is looking killer door open and closes absolutely beautiful just 
pretty stoked with how everything's going. So we started the car on April the 25th. We've got 10 days to go until we reach that four month mark. So let's see if we can uh, get this car all finished and revealed for you uh, within that four months we talked about. And you guys have been right behind us and never doubted us. So um, let's see if we can get it done. Okay, got the throttle pedal all finally functional um, and working up here. Took quite a bit of dicking around and um, a few versions to get this thing to work properly and go through its uh, range of motion to get the amount of uh, throttle required to turn that throttle body on the engine. We had to make a few modifications to the pedal, cut a few bits out, added this piece in and then also added this in to get the, the right throw to suit where our firewall and pedals are because we've got quite tall drivers. The pedals have to be really far up near the firewall. So got that all sorted, um, got a good throw on the pedal now. Um, and yeah, that, that came out pretty sweet, um, even though I had to make it five times. So another thing we finished up was the battery box, um, all painted up. Looking sweet, got uh, some little tiny cover tires to go on the box there. This is three mil aluminium or 1.2 steel, I think is the rule in Andra. So that any battery is that's inside the car with the driver has to have one of these and it has to be vented out of the cab. So you'll see underneath the car that there's a little tube going out there so that if this thing does catch on fire, it's fully contained inside this box and doesn't go catching the whole car on fire or something like that. Um, also, we cleaned up the 100 year old CO2 bottle, so that looks a lot better in there now um, as we're starting to finish up all these little finishing details. <laughs> They will be. This is what I've got to work with. Hey! <laughs> All right, we're just getting some paint on these bumpers. Um, I'll put a silver base down, mask them all up, put a silver base down. And I mean, they're pretty three-dimensional anyway, and we've got nice shadows happening, but I'm just gonna try and lift the bumper or make a separation from the bumper off the fender. So we don't have an airbrush. I've never done airbrushing, but I do know a guy that's done airbrushing. So we're just gonna wing it and see what we can do, but we're gonna try and so I'm going to aim the gun at the tape and then the overspray, hopefully, is just going to mist onto the edge of the bumper, which is going to lift it off the panel, supposedly. That's okay. Right, so now we've taped up the top side of the bumper and we're going to just mist a little bit on the shadowed lower side of the bumper. Once again I'm going to aim into the tape, to the tape itself and just doing the overspray to just come over the corner to create a shadow. We just finished off with a couple of little bits of white just to highlight highlight the high spot and do a little bit of a spot on the points of a few places and now I'm going to smash a second coat of clear on it and 
we will find out how shit I am at airbrushing very shortly. Alright, Saturday afternoon and we're well into the final fit out of the engine bay after putting the satin black on. The reason we did the satin black and didn't just leave the, etch, the, the flat black etch primer is because when we're spilling fuel and oil and stuff around in this engine bay it will strip that paint off. So this stuff is actually you know, solvent proof and everything. So another thing we did I forgot to tell you about is we put weight tabs on both front corners so we can just add little pucks of weight if need be when we're doing our final weighing up and setting up for the car. I've also just been making up a little throttle bracket here. We use the Morse cable like the parachute one for our throttle. So yeah, it's just a bit of flat bar with one of the one of the little um, cable mounts that we used on the chutes. And that's pretty much what we've used all the way along with all our throttle cables. It's a real heavy duty. So never have any issues with it. Cable just slots in here like that. And that's that's actually ended up nice and straight with the throttle body. And then we're going to stick that in there, if I can see it. And uh, that's our cable. Fair bit of uh, they have a they have a spring in the throttle body. So the rule book says you must have two springs. So we've got one in the throttle body itself, and then our extra external one. So try that full throttle. That is bloody mint. Nailed it. Just want to give you a quick update on how those bumperettes went and Dad was airbrushing him. He wasn't using a uh, an airbrush gun or anything, just a normal gun. It turned out pretty sweet. We got it all covered up because we've been putting stickers on already and we don't want you to see that yet. Not bad for an amateur. Nice shadow. You shadow right on the edge of the bumper there. It gets it to pop off the green. In the distance, clear coat makes it pop as well. It looks fucking sweet. All right, Sunday afternoon and we're just slipping into some uh, final fit out of the deuces onto the front clip. And we've been using, the, instead of using pot rivets, we've been using smash rivets to um give us a because when the when the deuce comes together with the the deuce tab i've used pot rivets for years and it ends up with a big curly in behind there and you've got to grind it off so we've been using some of wayne keys's smash rivets here and they're just like a they come from an aircraft shop basically they they come oversized and then you put these gauges around to to a size that suits you and then you cut them down and so they become a size that protrudes through the back they reckon one and a half times the drill bit size is the right length to have them but I'm just doing it so I've got you know a nice seven mil still protruding past and then you just get this tool like so and that will spread the back of it really wide open Nothing showing on the back side. That's a nice blind head on it. Holds it really firm. So that's uh, quite a nice little tool to be uh, meet up good with these deuce plates. There'll be no interference when we put the body on. So that's smash rivets. <laughs> Alright, moving on to wrapping up the plumbing side of things uh, down here in the engine bay. We got one of the crucial parts of the engine, the oil pump, mounted up. Our new fire stage Moroso deal. Um, it was pretty squishy in there, so we were going to mount it off one of these lower holes, but it ended up that the steering rack was right in the way of the wheel when we put the wheel on, so had to lift that up a bit. Um, and you'll see on this side that it's quite close to the head and the block, but that's what we had to do to get it out of the way of the steering and also to allow us room for those lines coming off the bottom. So thankfully we double plated that. It's got a heli coil through both of these plates. Um, so that's gonna be well strong enough to hold, hold that on. Um, and we're just waiting on finalizing belt sizes and stuff like that to be able to drill our second hole for the adjuster. And yeah, moving back into the car, we got the tranny in the car as well now and all those uh, tranny dumps that I was working on mounted up, 
all the lines pretty much final plumb up there. Just got a few more lines that we got to do for the uh, external cooler with the uh, quick uh, dry lock fittings to go in there. Uh, but the onboard cooler lines all hooked up and shortened up mint, um, looking good in there. And also all the way at the back, the burn down tubes coming through from the front that you would have seen up there, all the way out the back over the top of the cooler into the can. So yeah, that's a lot of the final plumbing done apart from that oil pump and we're looking in pretty good shape. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up week 17 of the Corvette build. It's getting real close now. It's getting all buttoned up. We just had it all put together so we could roll it out in the sun and have a quick look at it. We don't really have a car cover that's big enough to fit over this big ting, but just stay tuned because the reveal of this car could be getting dropped as soon as this weekend. So stay on the edge of these seats as usual. Like, subscribe, comment, share, tell all your buddies. It's gonna be lit. See you next time.